Hi there, here is Frederick from Sabertech and in this video I am going to introduce you into the basic structure of our online configurator and I'll also show you quickly how to use it. So the first thing you'll see when you open the link to our online configurator is this page here with, uh, with the beautiful galaxy in the background. In the foreground we've got two buttons uh, which reads uh, fast graphics on the left and fancy graphics on the right hand side. If you're using a computer with a quite old graphics card that is not that powerful then you should use the fast graphics mode whereas if you've got a computer with a powerful graphics card then you can choose the fancy graphics mode. So let's choose the fancy graphics mode for this tutorial. Now on the next page that opens you see this uh, particle animation in the background where the particles form uh, the uh, galaxy that we already saw on the previous page. And again here we've got two different buttons. On the left hand side we've got the easy mode button whereas we've got uh, the advanced mode button on the right hand side. And for this tutorial we'll choose the easy mode which uh, only differs from the advanced mode by uh, yeah, by the fact that uh, some parameters are missing there and by that it's a bit simpler to adjust the whole light effects. So as you can see here there are still a lot of parameters uh, even in comparison to the advanced mode um, but first let's uh, yeah let's quickly introduce you the different parts of this uh, interface of our online configurator. So the most important thing of our online configurator, at least to me, is this preview animation here, which shows you realistically how your Saber effects will look like. And below this animation we've got uh, a brightness diagram which shows the brightness of your saber uh, or yeah of, of all the channels of your saber uh, and how they change over time yeah and also below the animation we've got these uh, different buttons if you click on one of these buttons then you will trigger the respective corresponding motions. So if we click on clash here we'll trigger a clash effect and then we'll see how uh, the saber behaves during clash. Yeah, you see uh, as default values we've, we've got here a, a, a white clash that appears if we click here on the clash button. So we can do with the step for example. Then we see how it looks like when we have a step. Yeah, here's the step. Swing, spin, also lock up, yeah, glass lock, or a force push effect. So these are the default values so far. Then uh, the other important part of our online configurator is found here on the left hand side. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different index tabs which all correspond to different states of the saber except from the index tab called general settings because here you, you only adjust uh, yeah, the hardware settings of your saber. But for these eight index tabs here to the right um, yeah, we can configure, to, to, uh, we, we can customize uh, the behavior of the light effects, uh, well that is their appearance, during the respective motions or states res respectively. So if we click here on clash we configure the light effects of the clash, here we can configure the light effects during step and so on and so forth. But let's stay in the basic index tab at first. The basic index tab uh, yeah, defines uh, the light effects of your saber during idle mode. That means when no motion is triggered. 
So uh, currently we're using the default values and for these values uh, the saber is currently or currently has a red blade that uh, yeah has a, a kind of slight flicker. So let's go through the parameters quickly. We've got a first block which is called setting. Yeah, that's not very creative, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it uh, it uh, yeah it explains what you can do here. It's uh, yeah the kind of hardware setting you you're using on your saber. That means uh, in the first parameter here, which is called color, you'll choose yeah which LEDs you're using on which channel. So here the four channels are uh, uh, are corresponding to the different uh, columns. Here column 1 corresponds to channel 1, then here we've got channel 2, channel 3 and channel 4 in the fourth column. The color parameter now defines if we are uh, yeah, which LED we are using for which channel. So uh, for the default values here we've got a, a red LED on channel 1, a, a green LED on channel 2, a blue LED on channel 3 as well as, uh, as a blue LED on channel 4. Then next we'll choose the number of LEDs per channel. Yeah? Uh, in channel w on channel 1 we, uh, we're using one LED then there's also uh, connected one LED to channel 2, 3 and 4. We can go up to 4 LEDs per channel as our golden harvest boards... Uh, sorry... Our golden harvest board provides uh, up to 4 appear per channel. I think I should speak a bit slower. <laughs> so the next parameter is the LED type parameter. Uh, this parameter decides whether a LED is a plate LED or a accent LED. So for the first three channels we've chosen here plate LEDs and for the fourth channel we've chosen an accent LED, which is shown here in the preview animation as well. So yeah, one of the most important parameters yeah, of this configurator is the intensity parameter of the setting section. This intensity parameter defines the brightness of the LEDs that are connected to the different channels. So if we choose a value of 1023, which is the maximum value um, for channel 1 for example, then this means that the red channel is powered up to 100% of its maximum value. This corresponds to having a red blade here, because all the other intensities of the blade LEDs are set to zero, which corresponds to a disabled LED, or yeah, one could say a brightness of zero percent. So uh, yeah, if we uh, put the green uh, channel for example to 100% then we'll get of course a yellow plate. But ju let's just stay with the red plate for a while. Then uh, the next two important sections are the flicker section here and the pulse section here. I'll, uh, I'm not going to uh, too much into detail here because I'm also going to um, make another video where I in which I explain um, yeah, what these different parameters mean. But in this tutorial I only want to give you a short overview on the structure of this interface of the configurator. So in the flicker section you can adjust all the parameters that define the behavior of uh, uh, the flicker effect. Whereas in the pulse effect section you find all the parameters that, be, uh, that, that define how the pulse effect looks like. But as mentioned before, I'll make an own video for how to add flicker and pulse effects. So if we change now the index tab to clash for example, then we can adjust the color of the clash at first. 
by default we've got a white clash here but yeah we can also uh, yeah define a purple clash for example so for that we'll uh, uh, power down the green channel then we've got only the blue channel uh, the red channel and the blue channel to 100% which creates a purple clash yeah let's just trigger the clash from the basic state yeah, you see, we created a purple clash. Yeah, but let's go again with the uh, white clash. If and only if you want to uh, customize the clash effect even further, then you can unleash the full blown effect engine by selecting yes for customize effects even further. If you do so, you can yeah, you can yeah, have access to all the different parameters you also can adjust here in the basic effect so you can uh, you can de um, customize the clash effect uh, the clash effects at the same level as the basic effects so there are so many possibilities to customize the clash effects uh, yeah there are also effects possible that uh, we ourselves uh, just cannot imagine yet. So yeah, that's really amazing here. But uh, one thing I want to show you here also is uh, that here we've got uh, an additional setting section which contains two important parameters, yeah, which we don't have in the basic state. Uh, these parameters are fade out and effect duration. And as uh, its name suggests, um, the effect duration describes how long the light effects um, are displayed during the clash. So if we cut that down to 20 for example, we'll get a, a really short flash when we have a clash. Yeah, You see here, well, just a very short flash. If we increase it again to 100%, then we've got a, a very long flash. Yeah, you see? And now uh, the other parameter is a fade out, which uh, describes how smooth uh, the clash effects, yeah, go back to uh, the basic effects again. Yeah, if you select uh, zero percent here, then we have an abrupt ending of the clash. Whoop! You see, it ends abruptly. If we set it to one hundred percent, then it it really fades fades out very slowly so that we've got a, a intermediate state of an orange blade that's uh, that slowly but surely gets red again yeah you see it's really smooth so but let's go back to the default value again yeah so far the clash effects um, now we can go to step for example to adjust uh, the effects of the step and for the clash, uh, sorry, for the step state, we've got the, the, exactly the same setting as for the clash state. So we can select uh, the color of step here, for example. So let's go for Arctic Blue, for example. Well, that's not a good idea for a red blade, but I'll show you, uh, yeah, uh, the the concept. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. Here the same, you've got customized effects even further. I'll, uh, I, I won't show that again here, because it's exactly the same. Um, the swing and spin are a bit different uh, in comparison to Clash and Step. Here you've got um, an additional parameter which is called Activate Individual Swing Light Effects. As long as this parameter is set to No, yeah, the swing and spin light effects will be automatically the same light effects as during the basic state yeah that means if you perform a swing here yeah the blade color won't won't change if you change uh, the blade color in the basic state it will automatically be changed during the swing so yeah that's uh, yeah the normal case but if we want to have uh, a, 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 an, a unique style with a distinct light effects even during the swing we can choose yes here yeah and then we've got 
the same set of parameters as for the clash and step states. For example, we, we could change uh, the color a bit here during swing and then it would look like that. Let's go to the basic and uh, trigger swing. Yeah, you see, yeah, just a very slight color change, which I personally, uh, sorry, <laughs> I personally like very much. But for the moment, we'll disable that function again. Um, yeah, the spin effect is the same, and for the lock up, blaster block, and force push effect, uh, they are also uh, yeah, no different things than for the clash and step effects. So far, um, the light effects. And uh, in the last minute of this tutorial, I want to show you what you can adjust in the general settings in next tab. So don't be afraid of the high number of parameters here in the general settings. Um, I can tell you that in most cases, yeah, you only have to adjust the parameter called button mode. Yeah? Um, because here you can select whether your saber has only one momentary uh, switch or uh, one momentary switch and one latching switch or if it, ha if it has two momentary switches. So that's the most important parameter here. Then we've got also the motion engine parameters but which work uh, yeah, very well in most cases. Uh, with the default values and we've got uh, the volume here of your saber. Just as, uh, as, a last, uh, uh, as a last hint for the motion engine, if you want to adjust the motion sensitivity, yeah, for example the swing sensitivity, then you have to use this swing threshold parameter as follows. If you want to decrease the sensitivity, you have to increase this threshold value. Yeah, this threshold value yeah, describes how hard it is yeah, to trigger a swing. If you want to have uh, swings that are triggered uh, more easily with a higher sensitivity, then you have to decrease this value. Yeah, so far so good. I hope you could enjoy this short tutorial. And as I promised during this tutorial, I'll also make uh, yeah, more additional tutorials, especially some tutorials in which uh, I show you how to set up both flicker effects and pulse effects, as well as how to use the parameters of the advanced modes. Yeah. So thanks for watching and yeah, enjoy your Golden Harvest experience and see you next time. Bye!